All right, so we're back here with the smoke machine again. And this time what we're gonna do, I've sourced the pipe, um, the gas filler pipe here from eBay. This is a used unit. I got it for a really good price. I got it for $80 ship free. And it's in really good shape. So the first thing that I would say do, which is obvious since it's not a brand new part, I wanna test this thing to make sure it does, self does not have a leak. And also, I want to run my bore scope through it to make sure that there's no, for example, dirt doublers or anything built up in here that might can go into the gas tank. Because, again, you never know where it's been sitting, how long it's been sitting, that sort of thing. But um, let me go ahead and um, hook this uh, smoke up here, and I'll be right back here in a second. All right, so you can see I have the cone connected here. And once the smoke comes out of here, we're going to put... This is just going to evaluate the gas pipe because the evap i got another uh connection out here just to check that evap hose there so we're just going to go ahead and plug this in here give me let me set you down here for a second and plug this in all right so now blow that out of the face now that's that's connected to that we should see smoke coming out of the end here in a second if we see smoke come out that's what we want to see smoke and and, is, and if you watch the last video Smoke was coming out from here and here. So that means that under here somewhere, there was some corrosion that caused this pipe to rust out. So let's go ahead and stop this here. All right, so that means that the gas uh, part is good. Oops, that almost fell. Blow all that smoke out of there. All right, so now being that um, we, we've evaluated the, uh, let me blow some of this smoke. I mean, it ain't smoke, it's just, atomized baby oil but anyway um, i'm going to go ahead and connect the smoke here because i want to evaluate this evap line here that runs all the way down the side and um if that checks out then that's good and then what i'm gonna do next after that is i'm gonna run the bore scope through here to make sure there's no like dirt dobbler like nest or just something in there that could kind of get down in your gas tank maybe mess your fuel injectors up so give me a second and i will be right back all right, got the smoke machine connected to this right here, running through that EVAP line. And when we go down here, let's see, we see smoke coming out. So that means that the EVAP line is functioning. So that's really all we need to see. We can go ahead and cut the smoke machine off. And after this, we'll run the boroscope and see what happens. All right, we're about to give it a good check with the boroscope to make sure there's nothing built up in here. As I said, maybe like, um, let me go ahead and make sure this is recording. Yep, everything is recording now. So we just want to make sure there's no dirt, like say a dirt dobbler or something. Cause you don't know, this could have been in a junkyard. It could have been sitting inside of a warehouse where like it has access to book. You just don't know. So again, it's used. So let's go ahead and run this through. Set out my battery's a little low, but we can do this really quick. All right, so we go, let's just give it a good little check here. Okay, all right, so we see something's here. Let's see, I'm trying to, oh yeah, and it actually will come off. Anyway, I, I'll work with that off camera. We see, see, there you go. That's a prime example right there. There's some dirt right there. I'm going to see if I can get that out of there. I'll do that off camera. I'll just keep going for now. Um, again, there's seemingly a little bit more dirt right here on the top. Um, I don't know how I can get this thing. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit. Look at that. There's a little bit more right there at top. So... Let me see if I can keep going. This thing is kind of flimsy. So I think we should be good. Let's see. Hopefully there's not much more. So overall, there's a little defect. There's some sort of build up. That's okay. Um, overall, um, pretty pleased with what we got here. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to work with getting some of that dirt out off camera so you don't have to worry about seeing that part. But anyway, after that, we will jump on the car and begin removing the defective fuel filler pipe. And then we will install this one. So as you can see, I have removed the rear tire that's near the gas door because there is a fastener right somewhere in this area here that I need to undo. And you can't get to it without, you gotta take out the splash shield here. And there's, um, you know, obviously these right here are torques on this side over here. There's some panel clips. You can just move with a panel clip tool. There is a few actual screw fasteners in here. There's a screw fastener here. And it's in this one over here on this side here somewhere. But anyway, we're not going to worry about that. But just so you know, these screw um, ones that screw right here, these are 10 millimeter, but they are the nut is actually plastic. So 
be careful when you go in and don't just go in with a, you know, necessarily with an impact. I loosened it up by hand first to figure and figure that out. But um, again, it makes sense. It gives us a little bit play and probably helps with noise, vibration and harshness. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and remove this um, entire. I'm going to just go ahead and remove this uh, splash guard here so we can get to the fastener. That's somewhere right in this area right here. And then we'll get on the car and take the other fastener out. And I think the only biggest issue we're going to have is getting that fuel filler um, uh, uh, hose that's connected to the actual pipe off. And that's going to be the, probably the biggest issue. But again, I got a secondary, um, um, I got a backup plan for that if for some reason this gets too ridiculous to get off. All right, guys. So as you can see, I got the wheel wheel. Uh, what is this? I guess splash guard out and um, well, this filler neck is coming from up here, going up here and right behind there is the uh, fastener up here, which is about approximately right here and it's facing going in this way. So you would have to do it by feel. Just stick your hand up in there. It's 11 millimeter. You stick your hand up in there and get it off. But if you were standing under a lift or even later on your back, you probably could actually see it. But again, it's plenty of room. It's probably it's probably about a good three inch, three or four inches, both uh, left to right and front. So it's uh, up and down. So it's plenty of room right here to get up and able to ratchet and do it by feel. So this can be the first fastener we take off. And then we're going to go under the car to the other fastener and the um, removal of the uh, fuel hose from the hose, I mean, from the fuel pipe. All right, so I'm up underneath the car. This quick fitting right here is uh, going to be rusted a little bit. It's going to be hard to kind of get that off, but you just push in on the yellow pressure release thing, and then you just pry the um, head back. So basically, I took a screwdriver and a uh, long pair of a uh, needle nose pliers and was able to get this thing here loose. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, hose clamp right here off, which is the one I did not wanna take off, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and probably reinstall it on the filler neck and then push it back in. So I'm gonna undo this, undo this, and then we'll see just how easy it is to get this thing out of here. Oh, before we go any further, what I want to do is show you the actual permanent code as well. So I'm going to go into the uh, OBD2 and I'm going to show you the permanent code here. Let's show you it's a uh, P0442. And let's just do its thing real quick and hit uh, OK. And we want to read fault code. And again, we have um, th this right here is just uh, th this right here is just something I've been messing around with trying to do um, um, this P0113. I've just been, been messing around trying to do some uh, back probing and stuff. And that's that's probably nothing there. But this here is a code in question here that has not gone away. This permanent code P0442. So once I install everything, <clears throat> I'm going to drive it a little bit, go through a few drive cycles and see, will it turn it off immediately? Or does it take a, uh, or or does it take to do act, actually like the active fuel pressure test? I'm not sure what will turn it off, but anyway, we know that that fuel filler neck is faulty, so we're gonna go ahead and change that out. Didn't see any smoke from anywhere else, so this should resolve the issue. But I just want to show you this code really quick, and um, yeah, we'll go ahead and take everything off, and I'll continue on with the process here. All right, guys, I I got it out. So one thing I did not check, I forgot to check to see if this gas cap will fit the other one. So let me go check because I may be having to get another gas cap because um, they don't look the same. So let's go over here really quick and check that out uh, and uh, see what's going on with that. But before we go, let me just get something here. I'm going to just plug this gas tank just to keep fumes down here. Something, you know, stick it too far. That should be good enough there. And um, let's go over here. And we're going to check this out. Let's see. Let's set this here. And all right. So if you see this is here is in the screen. OK, this does not fit. And it's because of these little ridges right here. So uh, yeah, this this doesn't fit, as you can see. So that's a problem. 
Okay. I'm still going to install this. I just got to get the right gas cap to this. And this is the exact. What's funny is that this thing here is the exact part number. Uh, what well, should be the exact part number I have on this car. So anyway, I'm going to still take it out because it has to be changed out. Uh, the only thing we do here is just get another gas cap. I probably can go to the auto parts store and just buy a, um, a universal one that's just cheap until I can get a new one. Because again, you know those universal ones that end up leaking, you know, being causing EVAP codes. So we're going to see um, maybe some kind of way you can take this end off. I'm not sure. We'll see about that. It, you might can take the end off here. We'll investigate that because this here does move on the end. I don't know if you can see that, but we're going to investigate that. Let me take the other one off and we will move forward in that investigation there. All right, so I took the hose off, and again, you cannot take this piece off. It's just part of the hose. I thought maybe you could, but as you see, there's a big gap right there between the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position, but there is no such gap. This is more of a spiral in this unit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install this thing, and I'm going to just probably run to the parts store and get a um, universal part. Um, this part number here is what GM uh, says goes to the Buick LaCrosse, and it's probably based on its shape. Because again, I mean, uh, let me let me put them down on the floor side by side. So again, this definitely will. Oops, this definitely will fit the fit the uh, unit. As you can see, I mean, it's pretty much uh, um, exactly the same. Um, again, let me see if I can get a better shot of that, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're basically the same. Um, that's probably good enough for you to tell. So again, I'm gonna just run through the parts. So, so again, that's two things to be aware of, is that the pipe on the end, if you was changing your fuel filling neck, you likely had to get a new pipe, depending on how your car is set up. It really wasn't, it really wasn't um, that convenient for me to get this out without breaking it, well, not breaking it, but kind of destroying it a little bit. But I'm sure you could probably got some type of hose clamp tool and got it out perfectly fine. But it looks kind of gritty. I'm going to just go ahead and put the new one up there, put the new uh, pipe on the, I mean, hose on the end and check your filler caps before you change. So that way you'll know if you need to get a new filler cap. I'm, again, I'm just going to run the auto zone or somewhere, get me a um, universal cap for the time being. But I'm actually going to order a full, an official GM cap that'll fit this um unit here and let's just take a look i was going to take this thing apart here just look inside of it. i still might but man you can see just how grody and rusty that thing actually you can see re really i think you can physically almost see a hole like right here on the end almost let me see if i can get that in the light a little bit but uh yeah you can't really see it that well but i'm i'm probably just going to take this apart just to look at it but anyway this is the old one got it out and in will go the new one all right, guys, we got everything installed. So what we're going to do, we're just going to back out. We're going to go into uh, the um, EVAP system and we are going to um, I've been mean, going to the ECM and, and just seal off the thing, seal off the EVAP uh, system, the, the purge, I mean, not personal, no, but the um, vent canister. And uh, let me get out of here. It, yes, again, diagnosis. Yes, OK, there we go. And then we're going to run some smoke through the system to make sure that we don't have any more leaks before we finish buttoning everything else up. All right, quick access. And, and then I don't have a gas cap yet, so if some smoke come out of the gas cap, that's totally okay. So we're gonna go to ECM, enter to a front drive. And let's go to actuation test, VAP, the uh, vent solenoid. And we're going to say not venting. Yep, heard it close. So not venting. All right. So now a smoke machine is here. Uh, give me a second for so get a little light here so I can see what I'm doing. Well, not see what I'm doing, but to show you all what I'm doing here. Um, I'd, so there is a, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put that there. Here's the uh, smoke machine again, obviously. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, well, I gotta plug that back up here. Pretty easy, just plug that into power. Plug it onto your ground, move that out of the way. We're good. 
Just go ahead and hit these two buttons here. I think you only got to hit this one button actually to get smoke, but I'm going to just hit both. I just always do. All right, so once the smoke comes out of here, we're going to connect it to the car system again. Yep, there we go. As you can probably see, got a nice stream of smoke. So let me just insert this here into the vent. Uh, I mean, into the service port. So we hook that back to the service port right there. Now let's go get on the car and see what we see. We should see some coming out of the gas tank here. I mean, at the gas cap, because I mean, there's no cap. I'm going to just take that off. Yeah, we already see smoke here. So that means that smoke is all the way through the system. So um, oh, that's right. Let me go get my light right quick. We're just going to go underneath the car, verify that it's not smoking from that same spot that we just uh, that we saw smoke from the last time. And then we'll call it a fix. All right. So the last time we saw smoke coming from here, right here on this side here and on the other side over here. Right? Yeah, right here. So it's, it's, it was rusted behind this bracket right here. Again, I don't see smoke anywhere else except for coming down from the um, gas tank. As you can see there, it's coming down from the gas tank. No smoke anywhere over there that I can see. And so that's it. We're going to call this a fix. And what we're going to try to do is um, give the car a few drive cycles. See if we can go ahead and get rid of the permanent code. And that would be it for this one. All right. So I went and picked me up a uh, universal gas cap. This is a car crest premium. It says uh, tighten to at least three clicks. Part number there. And it fits just fine. So everything is fitting good. So I'm going to undo it and I'm going to screw it in one more time. It said do at least three clicks. That was several clicks. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to cut the smoke machine back on. So let me go ahead and cut this back on. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that um, that uh, the gas cap is not leaking. It shouldn't. I mean, but um, I, but just to be thorough here, I'm going to I'm going to check this. So let's let some smoke come out. Smoke is coming. Let me set the camera down for a second. Insert this into the EVAP service port. All right. Now smoke gets through this system kind of fast. So we would expect smoke to already be here. So I'm gonna give it a few seconds. Give it about two more, three more seconds. One, two, three. I would say that if I don't see any smoke by now, we're not probably gonna see any smoke, but what we could do is go ahead and open the cap up to make sure smoke actually comes out to know that it's back here. So there it is, smoke is just billowing out. This right here stops the, um, that stops the um, smoke from coming out. So there you go, we have a sealed system now. So um, that's it. That's pretty much it for this one. Um, I'm gonna do some bonus footage here and I'm gonna add it to the um, video where I'm going to, um, I'm gonna cut this off, where I'm going to uh, get a car for drive cycles and I'm going to see, can I just get rid of the permanent code to make sure it actually will go away. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. All right, so here's some bonus footage for you. Here's a little post-mortem analysis of this fear filler pipe and where the fault was at. And it was indeed right under that bracket. And let's see, there we go. See the hole right there? Yeah, that is the hole. And you can tell most of this stuff right here looked like it's impregnated with rust. And you likely could fix this if you took your time and sanded it down. Probably get you JB Weld or something like that and probably patch this up. But... Uh, I might keep it around. I'm not sure just yet, but I might just go ahead and just toss it.